Hello and welcome to China Shortcuts, the European Chamber's weekly catch-up on China's business landscape. Producer prices in China fell 2.7 percent year-on-year in December, maintaining a downward trajectory for the 15th consecutive month, underscoring prolonged weak demand. While the year-on-year drop slowed slightly from November, on a month-on-month basis, producer prices continued to slide at the same speed as recorded in the previous month. Overall, in 2023, prices producers charged their clients shrank 3% compared to 2022. Meanwhile, consumer prices fell for the third month in a row in December. However, the 0.3% rate of year-on-year decrease was milder than the data from the previous month. In 2023, consumer prices edged up 0.2% compared to 2022, staying well below the official target, which aimed to cap annual inflation at 3%. For the first time in seven years, the value of China's four-year exports in US dollar-denominated terms fell in 2023 due to sluggish global demand and the depreciation of the renminbi. The full-year foreign trade data showed a 4.6% decline in exports and a 5.5% drop in imports compared to 2022. This was despite a year-on-year uptick recorded both in the value of exports and imports in December. In fact, at 2.3%, the growth in export value was the highest since April. The drop in the value of exports can at least be partly attributed to the depreciation of China's currency as in Chinese yuan terms, the full-year export value showed a 0.6% increase. The European Union remained China's second-largest trade partner in 2023 after the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, with the United States the third-largest. On 11th January, China's National Immigration Administration introduced five measures to facilitate foreign nationals' visits to China for the purpose of business, tourism, or education. The measures seem to bring some improvement, for instance, by providing the option for foreign nationals who need to travel to China urgently to apply for a port visa on arrival. However, some do not appear to be completely new or are not expected to bring about significant changes for the majority of foreigners traveling to China. Further clarification on the implementation of a number of these measures is still needed. In a dataset released on 17th January, China's Statistics Bureau announced that in 2023, the country's gross domestic products, or GDP, grew 5.2% from 2022, in line with the government's target of around 5%. Other highlights of the dataset showed that industrial production increased 4.6% year-on-year, while retail sales were up 7.2% from the previous year. Surveyed urban unemployment stood at 5.2%, 0.4% lower than in 2022. Although last year the National Bureau of Statistics discontinued the monthly release of the unemployment data broken down to different age groups, it did provide the numbers for the whole year. 14.9% of young people between the ages of 16 to 24 were out of a job in China's largest cities last year. Meanwhile, China's population decreased by over 2 million compared to 2022. Since its founding in 2001, the European Chamber has been conducting its business confidence survey to provide an annual snapshot of how European business is faring in China. Based on the survey's findings, the report presents both the hurdles that European companies are facing in the Chinese market as well as the improvements that they have seen. This year's online survey officially opened on the 15th of January with a link to the survey and a unique access code sent to the primary contacts of all member companies. By completing the survey before 9th February, your company will help to shape the Chamber's advocacy messaging for the coming year. All information received from members will be anonymized and remain strictly confidential. Thanks for listening. Tune in again next week. In the meantime, please find useful links in the episode notes.